What's up guys? Welcome back to Go Ham Disc Golf. I'm Big John. And uh, a lot of you guys have been asking for a while now for me to do a little tutorial on how to do uh, how to die discs. So I'm going to do a series of different videos on how to, you know, die discs. And I want to start off with a very simple, simple die uh, using a stencil. And I want to show you guys what you need to get that done and the process that you go through to get it done. So the first thing you need is a disc. All right, we're going to use a hot pink Buzz SS. It's a Z plastic. Check it out. It's uh, actually one from my bag and it's been beat up just a little bit, but not too much. So we're going to have that. Next, we're going to need a ruler. Just to measure out certain things, it always comes in handy. Make sure you have one if you're going to die discs. An X-Acto blade. This is the one I use. I use uh, size 11 blades. And I'll show you what the package looks like here. Size 11 blades. Next, you need a Sharpie or some other kind of marker just for marking off certain places where you might, might not want to die or if you want to outline the shape of your disc on your vinyl, that kind of stuff. You need scissors to cut your tape, other, other kind of stuff like that. Plus, who doesn't like cutting? You need a roll of contact paper. Um, this isn't exactly necessary. You can use masking tape, but I like to use this contact paper. It's four inches wide and it comes in really handy. And uh, I'll show you guys how that's used. I also use a roll of masking tape just to hold stuff down when I'm cutting it, just to make things easier so stuff doesn't slide around. You need acetone to remove stamps from discs. That's 100% acetone. And I keep my acetone in here just to make it a little easier to get to. You need cotton balls for when you remove the stamp. You need a towel that uh, you don't mind getting dye all over. You need a pot or something else to actually put the dye in and then put the disc on top of. And then the last thing you need is dye. This is I Dye Poly Black. Um, I'll put a picture up right around here so you guys know what the package looks like. All right, you need a piece of vinyl. This is, uh, this is Green Star vinyl. A lot of people like to use the Oracle vinyl um, because it's, I guess it's a higher grade vinyl. But I've never had any issues with Green Star. I've used Oracle before. It works really good. The Green Star works just as good. In my opinion, maybe a little bit better. It's got a little bit more pull to it. So uh, that's what I use. And it's also cheaper than the Oracle. So that's why I use it. And then you need an image. All right. That's what we're going to be putting on this pink Z-Buzz SS. All right. So let's go ahead and remove the stamp off of this Buzz SS. And I'll show you guys how we do that. Get our acetone out. Cotton ball. And these stamps usually come off pretty easy without having to put too much pressure on them. Acetone really does its job. There's some acetone there, and I hope you guys can see this. We're just going to wipe that stamp off. Now you see that stamp has pretty much turned into a, almost like a white wash. So a lot of times what you got to do is wipe the stamp and then go wash it off and then, you know, re-wipe it again with acetone so that you get anything that you might have missed. Let's get some more acetone to put on there. And let's get all this stamp off of there. See how it's coming off pretty clean? And we still got a bit of a ghost stamp on there, so let's hit it one more time with some acetone. Don't get too close to this acetone because you will get high and just fall down, and that's not really productive when you're trying to dye a disc. And there we go. We got a clean slate. So we can go ahead and start cutting out our, uh, our stencil on the vinyl, and then we'll apply it to the disc. I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so now we have our stencil completely cut out of the vinyl. We still have our uh, original image. And you'll notice in the last part, uh, the part that just finished, 
You'll notice that I used an old uh, an old table that was a glass table. I took the glass out of it and I have a piece of uh, acrylic uh, sheeting, which is also kind of like plexiglass. Had that sitting right on top of the frame. That way I can put a light underneath it. And then on top of the glass, I put uh, my image and then I put the vinyl on top of it and then I can just cut it out easily like that. You just need to have something that can shine light from the bottom and make the image show up underneath the vinyl. All right, so I'll show you what it looks like now. This was our original image. And this is what our vinyl looks like now. We'll see if it shows up on the camera. You can see how it's cut out there. So now, what we need to do is transfer this onto our disc. So to do that, this is where the contact paper comes into play. So we get a piece and lay this down on the top side of the vinyl, the same side that we cut on. We gotta make sure that we cover up the whole stencil with it. We also need to get it flat as possible and try not to get any air bubbles inside of there. Try and get all those bubbles out. We need another piece to cover the other side. Alright, so now our stencil is completely covered and we can take the backing off of the vinyl now. Yeah, we can remove this right off because the contact paper on the front is going to hold our stencil down to where it needs to be. But just remember when you pull this off, if you have any little pieces, they might try and stick to the backing instead of the contact paper. So take it off slowly and watch it as it comes off. Alright, so now we have our stencil ready to be put onto the disc. So get our disc, find the place where we want to put it, and we lay it down on there. One thing to remember is when you put your disc down onto the vinyl, it's very sticky. You only have one chance really to put it down. If you get in the wrong place, it can be almost impossible to pull the vinyl off and save your stencil. So when you put your disc down, make sure you got it exactly where you want it. Now once you have it on there, you want to start at the middle and push as many bubbles out as you can. So now this is what we have. Contact papers on top, vinyls underneath. Make sure you can get as many bubbles out of there as you can and then we can take our contact paper off. Okay, now our stencil is completely transferred to the disc. Now what we have to do is fold this around so we can actually dip it. Now one thing you can do that will make this whole process a lot easier is once you fold these four edges down Take these corners and make handles out of them. Okay, so we have our stencil on our disc. And we have our handles for holding the disc. Now you want to go through very carefully and make sure that every single line and every single edge on here has no bubbles near it. Because if you do have bubbles inside the vinyl or on the edge of the vinyl, then your dye will leak into them and spread to undesirable places. Don't worry about any bubbles that may be around something that's not near an edge. You just want the ones on the edge. So let's get into it and make sure there's no bubbles. If you do find a bubble close to an edge, nine times out of 10, you can just press really hard and push it out of the way. Or you can use the back of your nail and push it out that way. But you want to make sure that there's no bubbles, especially where the stamp used to be. It's either going to be slightly raised or slightly lowered. So that's a place the die can easily slip into. So make sure you check in where the stamp used to be. All right, looks pretty good. Now we just want to clean up these edges so that we don't have anything sticking over that die can settle on or slip into. You want to make sure that your vinyl covers over this, over your rim. Because if you happen for some reason to get the disc too low in the die, you don't want to give it a place to creep over into your disc. So let's just get it all rounded. Okay, looks like we are ready to go. 
out, get our pot out or whatever you plan to put your dye in. Um, a lot of times you can heat up the dye and it'll make the, the disc take the dye a little faster, sometimes more vibrantly. Um, a lot of times I actually don't heat my, uh, my dye up. I keep it at room temperature and I don't mind doing that because I can leave a disc in the dye for long periods of time and it'll still take just as good. But if you are going to heat your dye up, um, make sure that you don't heat it up to its boiling. If it starts steaming or you see a little smoke coming off the top, then you've gone too far. If you can still touch the sides of the pan or whatever it's in and not burn yourself, you're okay. But for this one, we're just going to use room temperature dye. One thing to mention about uh, this dye, and you see where I got some on the counter right there or on my little table? That's probably never going to come off of there. Uh, one thing, just keep in mind that wherever you're doing anything with this dye, that whatever it lands on, you're either going to have an insanely hard time trying to get it, get it off, or it's not going to come off at all. So just remember that. If it does get on your skin, you'll probably get stained for a day or so, but it comes off. Now that our dye is in the pan, go ahead and grab your disc by the handles you made, and you want to go down at an angle, that way you can push out any bubbles. We're going to get in here at an angle and let it sit for a second pick it back up just to make sure you're getting everything off of it see all those bubbles in there yeah that's our that's our enemy so let's put it back in at an angle again push all those bubbles out then one more time for good measure now when you're putting the disc into the pan make sure you're doing it very light you don't want to put any pressure at all because if that die pops over the rim at all it's going to get right on the flight plate and that can destroy whatever you're planning on doing so now we're going to leave it here for a while um since the the die is not heated i'll probably leave it here for a couple hours and then come back and check on it uh but one thing i do like to do is every half an hour or so i'll come and check on it pick it up make sure there's no bubbles going on that way if there are bubbles i can reset the disc and uh, that'll get rid of those bubble marks that may have been put in there. Back in a little bit to pull it out and see what the final product looks like. All right, guys, pulled the disc out of the out of the die, and I went and rinsed it off. And now it's time to take the vinyl off and see what our disc ends up looking like. All right, so there we go, guys. There's our finished product. We got the Pink Panther on a pink Buzz SS C plastic. Bring it a little closer so you can check it out. I probably could have left it in the dye a little bit longer and my camera's not doing it enough uh, justice. The dye is in there a lot darker than this, but I could have left it in. But I kind of like the way it came out, so that's how it is, guys. I'll show you the original image that we had. <clears throat> and there we go. Straight onto the disc. So that's it for the first disc dyeing tutorial. If you guys have any questions, make sure you send them my way and I'd be happy to answer them. And that's going to be it for today, guys. Don't forget to go ham.